Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NewCoder.com. And in this tutorial, we are going to be working with forms once again with functional components using the useState hook. So we're going to be going over some more input fields. So we're going to be going over drop down menus, checkboxes, and radio inputs. All right, so to get started, let's work with drop downs first. So let us create a state for drop downs. And what we are going to do is initialize this to Apple. So this is one of our options that we could pick from our drop down menu. Next, let us head to our form. We're going to print out the drop down state just for visual purposes. So we'll say drop down value is and just output the state. Next, let's go ahead and code our drop down menu. So we use a select tag and we don't need any of these props. So we'll just get rid of them. And within here, we could pass in our options. So let's create an option. And our first option, we're going to pass a value prop of Apple. Okay. And we want to display Apple to the user. Next, all we need to do is make a couple of copies of this. So our second option, let's make it an orange. And we need to change this value prop to orange. Within here, we'll call this a banana and we'll change the display to banana. All right. So now what we want to do is make this a controlled component. So control component is going to need a value prop. And this value prop is going to be bounded to our state. So we're just going to pass down the drop down state. Next, we need a way to update this state. So we have an on change handler and this is just going to be a function which we're going to get the event object. And within here, we're just going to update the state. So let's go ahead and call set dropdown and we're going to pass whatever value the user has selected. So we'll say e dot target dot value. OK, so this is why the value prop is important. So this is how it's linked together. All right. So now let us go ahead and save this. Let's take a look at it in the browser. And there you go. So we initialize our state to Apple. So this is our default state. Drop down values Apple. If I click orange, you see that our state changes. So our on change handler is being invoked. And if I click banana, you see that it keeps changing. All right. So that is drop down menus in a nutshell. So now let us go ahead and move on to checkboxes. So let's come up here and create another state. So I'll just call this is checked. And we'll say set is checked. And let's go ahead and initialize this to false. So now let's go ahead and go to our form. Let's go ahead and output the state. So I'm just going to make a copy of that and we'll say check box is and we just can't output a Boolean within these curly braces. So we're going to have to check to see if is checked is true, then we'll just display true. And if it isn't, we'll display false. Next, let's actually create our input. So let's go ahead and create an empty line. Afterwards, we're going to create a label and we'll get rid of this. And what we'll display is checkbox. Next, let's put our input underneath. So we'll just say input and instead of text, we're just going to pass in checkbox. And we're going to need to pass a couple of more props. So the first prop is instead of value checkbox uses something called checked. And within here, we're going to pass our state. So this is going to make our checkbox input a controlled component. Like all controlled components, we're going to need an on change handler. And then this is going to take in a function. And all we need to do 
is called our set is checked so we're going to update the state and instead of saying e.target.value for checkboxes you would use checked all right so let us go ahead and save take a look at it in the browser and there you go so we initialized it to false you see that up here if i click this checkbox we go true and false so our on change handler keeps getting invoked and our state is updating. All right, so that is a checkbox. Let us go into our final input, which is radio buttons. So let's go ahead and create our initial state. So I'm just gonna call this radio. And let's use the apple orange banana example. So we'll set the initial state to apple, just like our drop down menu. Now, from here, let's come down to our form. Let's go ahead and make a copy of this. And we'll say radio button is. Let's get rid of this. And we'll just go ahead and output the state. All right, so now let us come here. Let's create a break just to give us some space. First, we're gonna create a label. And we'll get rid of that. And within here, we'll just display Apple since this is our initial state. Next, we're gonna create our input. And let's go ahead and remove that text and make it a radio button. All right, so now we're gonna have to pass a couple more props. So just like checkboxes, we pass a checked prop, and this is gonna be bounded to our state. So in order to do that, you would just check it to see if it is the current state. So I would just say, if radio is equal to Apple, that means that this is the current button that has to be checked. The next prop that we're gonna pass in is the actual value. So we're just gonna set this to Apple. And the final prop, since this is a controlled component, is always the on change handler. This is how we can update the state. So this is gonna be a function. And we are just gonna call set radio. And within here, we're just gonna pass e.target dot value and value is going to be whatever we passed in here as a prop okay so we're going to need a couple of these so let's go ahead and make another break and i'm just going to copy all of this go ahead and paste this two more times all right so now we changed apple to orange and we changed this to orange and value to orange everything else stays the same and we do the same thing for banana. Alrighty, so now that that is out of the way, let's go ahead and save this. Let's open up the web page, and there you go. So radio button is Apple, and that is our initial state. If I click, our on change handler gets invoked, and it updates the state to the value prop. All right, so that is pretty much all I wanted to cover within this tutorial, and I'll see you guys in the next one.